Greenleaf is back and let me say this there are a bunch of new scandals that are now come upon the horizon let's talk about it hey what's up everybody welcome back to KRS TV this is your boy Kenny and this is Greenleaf Season 4, Episode 1. And the name of this episode is Original Sin. I am so happy Greenleaf is back, y'all. I am a huge fan of this show. And this episode did not disappoint. They came back and they came back strong. I mean, the last scene on this episode had my mouth dropped like, What? Seriously? <laughs> Woo! I'm saying these Greenleafs got a lot... They got a lot with them, you know, the entire family. Everybody got something going on. So, um, let me let me begin with this review. Harmony and Hope has literally done a hostile takeover of Calvary. It's being led by Phil DeMars, who's this black guy, and Bob Whitmore, you know, who's this very rich um, billionaire. And... They have literally taken over Calvary under the name Harmony and Hope. Um, and we literally see in the beginning of the episode, church is going on. We see this girl like singing in the, um, you know, singing in the pool pit like Charity used to do. And we see Charity is in her feelings because the whole Greenleaf family has literally been shut out of you know leadership positions in the church the only person that is still within the leadership realm of the church is grace and she's the interim associate pastor but we see the whole family literally sitting there and they literally got their noses turned up they got their mouths frowned i mean they are really feeling like they have been shut out and we know that the harmony and hope takeover was led by um, Bishop Connie Sykes and the Deacon Board. They were the ones who ushered them in, and they have a totally different agenda. But one thing I'm already seeing about about Harmony and Hope that they are far more evil and far more sinister than the Greenleafs. I mean, the Greenleafs had their stuff. Trust me, the three seasons that we've seen the Greenleafs at the helm, they have had their share of trials and tribulations and scandals and wreckage you name it but i can see with harmony and hope they have there's no god in that there was there was at least some god with the green leaves especially when we get to know the bishop that the bishop is such a complex character we can definitely see that harmony and hope they are all about the money they are all about you know getting the numbers because here we here we have it you know grace is um we because even in the pulpit um I'm, I'm sorry even in the um in the in the pews um did i say they were in the pulpit i meant to say that the green leaves were sitting in the pews looking at everything because they had literally been shut out of everything if i said they were in the pulpit that was a, that was uh that was a that was a Freudian slip i apologize i meant to say that they were you know that they're sitting in the sanctuary while only people, the only person, the only Greenleaf that's on the pulpit is Grace. Because Grace is the interim associate pastor, as I mentioned before. But, and we already see that Bishop um, Greenleaf is like sitting and was saying like, hmm, I already know what their message is going to be about. <laughs> Let's get into that money. And then we see Connie um, Sykes looks back and Lady May just gives her the dirtiest look, child. Like, Lady May is ready to take them down. Like, she is so ready to take the church back. And then we see that Grace is about to go up preach. And tell me why Bob whispered to her, keep it short. So, obviously, this ain't about the Lord. This ain't about letting the Spirit move into the place and seeing, you know, and letting God work. This is all about, let's give them a show, keep it short, and let's keep that money coming. So they literally are, so pretty much what we see is that Harmony and Hope are literally, are literally changing Calvary to like the church version of McDonald's. That is going to be a part of a collective chains of churches because they literally own many churches and all of them 
are literally, you know, controlled by harmony and hope. And we kind of see this unfold. And then we also see that, um, we see after the service, you know, Sophia hasn't been to church in a while, you know, but she's getting ready to go to college. Um, and even, you know, Lady May had even told Gigi that her sermon was kind of, you know, concise. And... And then all of a sudden we see that um, Grace, we also kind of see that there's a different dynamic between Grace and Lady May this season. Like, they're, they're, since that whole situation has come about, it's kind of drew May and Grace and Lady May closer. Um, and, and if anything, they, they pretty much are discussing because um, Grace is trying to get Jacob and Charity in as associate pastors so they can get more green leaves in in the leadership position of the church because the only person that's serving in any leadership factor is um is grace so you know they pretty much discuss like grace is saying i'm trying to work on something to get the family back into the church um and then all of a sudden she says well excuse me sweetheart let me go pay my respects to the dead and you see her go over to um so pretty much we see her go over to talk to um, Bob Whitmore and Connie Sykes. And she was just throwing all kind of shade, you know. Well, she's like, oh, yes, I just talked to my daughter. And I told her that her ministry today was kind of inefficient. You know, minister's minutes. <laughs> like, she was just throwing all kind of shade about that. And then he was saying that. Then she was also going in about like, oh, so I guess the only thing that matters is the offering, offering over the spirit. Um, and you know, trying to make sure you keep the trains running on time. And, I mean, I mean, but pretty much she really is starting to peep that, yeah, she's really peeping their whole agenda. And she is just not holding back with Bob Whitmore. But Bob Whitmore kind of likes her spiciness in a way he's kind of turned on by it. So we can kind of see he kind of got his eyes on May, and May kind of was clocking it too, like, uh huh, whatever. Then we see that um, after he walks off, you know, because Connie peeked that he kind of, like, kind of had a thing for May, and Connie was like, oh, you really think you're going to work him over? It's not going to work. You know, it doesn't matter whether the bishop gave you the church because the church was not, it was not for his to give, and you will never be the head of this church. Not today, not tomorrow, not next month, not next year, not now, not ever. And then when she walked away, we see that Miss um, Connie had a piece of tissue on her shoe, and um, um, Lady May was like, Connie, she's like, now what? She's like, nothing. I was like, you shady. Oh my God, Lady Bay is so shady. <laughs> I was so here for that. That was cute. So then, um, we see that Grace goes to Phil to try to get Charity and Jacob on as associate pastors. He immediately turns her down and says, like, look, it's never going to happen. Then we see that the bishop has a meeting with, um, with Bob Whitmore and he starts talking about this guy, Mike Evans. And he said that Mike Evans had a good church, had a good following. He was never going to, he was the type that was never going to sell to you. And then all of a sudden, you, um, all of a sudden some, some stuff comes about him having a, um, addiction of painkillers when he had blew out his back building houses for the homeless after Hurricane Katrina. And then all of a sudden, we see, you know, his church becomes a harmony and hope, and now Mike Evans is dead. I was like, wow. So they literally are literally doing a hostile takeover of black churches. I mean, this is like church gentrification. It's insane. Uh-huh. And then, like, pretty much, uh, the bishop kind of just told Bob straight up that, you know, um, that you're going to fall hard and fast. And and I hope you get the spirit of redemption because you ain't going to have nothing but a bunch of bad heat. And then we see that Bob's old 
arrogant behind starts telling him, hmm, shoot, that ex-wife of yours, she's a spitfire, ain't she? I wonder why you ever let her go. So, let's tell you right there, he trying to get at Lady May. Like, sicko. Anyway, so then we see that Grace and Aaron have a conversation on the phone, and pretty much, um, she talks about, like, you know, Jacob and Charity being rejected, and she doesn't understand, and, you know, and, she, and, and then, like, you know, Aaron starts really schooling her, and was saying, like, look, you can't fix your family by giving them jobs. It's no different than your mom trying to keep this a secret, and she was like, pardon me? He was like, look, it's kind of like what your mother does. She likes to smooth things over instead of allowing change to happen. And then she was like, I can't believe this. I literally got schooled by my baby brother. I'm like, yeah, honey, because, you know, Aaron's an attorney, so he's a sharp thinker. But he got her together on that. So then we see we get a scene with um, Zora, Jacob, and Carissa. You know, little Winky keeps farting and driving Zora crazy. She wants to live in the cabin that um, Noah used to live in. Carissa ain't having it. And, um, you know, Zora's saying, but I'm a, gr I'm a grown-ass woman and blah, blah, blah. And, and like, uh, Jacob's like, excuse me? And pretty much Carissa's like, a grown woman knows how to speak to people. Yeah, because that was out of line and out of order, girl. You should have, like, Carissa should have slapped you for doing that because you was out of line. But then she says, but mom, I need my own space. I, I, I'm I, getting older. I need my own I need my own life. And she's, and Carissa's like, look, if anybody's going to move into that, into that cabin, it's going to be me. And then, like, Jacob's like, yeah, and after what that stunt you pulled with Isaiah, we ain't letting you out of your sight. They making her go to a college near them so they can keep tabs on her. I'm like, hmm, y'all gonna need more than that to keep in Taz or Snore because we know that Zora is sneaky. She's very sneaky, she's very manipulative, and she's always gotta, you know, she's, she's always gotta, you know, got like a little secret plan always in her stand. She, she's the wild card. You know, we've seen in season one where pretty much the bishop described, described, you know, Zora as a cautionary tale. She literally is, because every time you turn around, Zora's getting into trouble. Um, so then, like, and within all this is going on, some woman named Doris rings um, Jacob's phone. And then afterwards, we really see that even though Carissa is staying in this marriage, the strain of their marriage is so evident, and there's still a lot of tension there where Carissa is back to her being her controlling, bossy old self, and she's constantly accusing, um, you know, Jacob of cheating. Because remember last season, he kissed Tasha. She's still on that. She ain't forgave him for that yet. She's still pissed off that, one, she's back living in the Greenleaf house. And after her having that freedom living on her own, she's now living back in the Greenleaf house being controlled by Lady May. She's not having it. And she's also still mad at the fact that Jacob, you know you know, live lock with Tasha. So, we just see that their marriage is still rocky. Then we get to the dinner table, and Carissa showed her natural black behind. Seriously. She showed her behind. So, they pretty much started in on Grace, because Grace said that, you know, he won't take on Jacob or Charity to be associate pastors. So, of course, Charity feels some kind of way. And Carissa, you know, her and Carissa literally tag team against Grace. And I'm like, y'all are so petty and so self-righteous. It's ridiculous. Like, all y'all care about is just having positions in the church. Y'all don't care that she's literally trying to get you guys in there so y'all can get it back for the family. Y'all just want positions. And... And then it gets to the point where Carissa starts getting really nasty and starts going in saying that, huh, our lives would have been fine until you showed up. You know, they probably would have still been married and, you know, and that, you know, mom would have gotten to church. But no, you came down here and you spun everything all out of control and now you sitting up here and 
you're in a position where you can help your brother and sister instead of only helping your damn self. Oh, Grace got up like, yo, I will wreck you. <laughs> like, seriously. And Grace just left. And I don't blame Grace because, trust me, Carissa was going in so hard that she was she she should have got a jaw to her to her, she she literally she she should have got a a punch to her jaw. That's what I meant to say. Cause she was way out of line, and even Lady May was even kind of looking like, "Girl, what are you what is you on?" Like seriously, you come in here with all this negativity and contempt, and you think something's gonna go your way? Cause she says that you have brought everybody down. Worst of all, me. And Lady was like, um, what has she really done to you? What have, what makes you think what you're going through is any worse than what me and the bishop has faced? But yeah, she really got nasty. And it's like, man, it goes right back to that Carissa in season one that I wanted to strangle. She's back. And she's back even worse because she's had a little experience outside the house and now that she's back in the house and she's kind of still dealing with the same I issues like Jacob you know wandering off you know getting getting caught in situations with other women and then she feeling unfulfilled within herself she's just a spitfire and she's just taking that out on everyone um, and then all of a sudden we see that you know Charity goes off and saying that Oh, so that's what it is? Huh. You really just think you're the only one in the family that can preach? I can preach, and I'm not. And if I do, if we do get back into the fold, I'm not singing. I'm going to preach. I am going to become Pastor Charity Greenleaf. And I'm going to talk about that Satan is real. And I'm going to do a series. And then Jacob was like, man, you ain't going to get AP before I do. It was so funny because it was like a little brother and sister fight. And it was so hilarious. That them two are hilarious. Like, they were going back and forth. He's like, girl, shut up. You ain't going to be AP before me. And she's like, yes, I am. And she's like, no, you not. And why you always got to preach about a series? Don't nobody care about you preaching a series. And she's like, shut up. <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, and they just kind of sitting there like these two are so full of themselves I can't like it, it was so it was so hilarious oh my god that was that was so funny and then like we see that Lady May and Grace have a sit down and she tries to tell Lady May like look why don't you just tell them that I'm Lionel's daughter you know and but she says but um, Lady May says we will tell them once we win the church back I'm like actually telling them now will probably help you know you still holding this a secret from everybody and charity and like um and then like you know i'm sorry but then grace is just feeling like you know she still has to live this lie even though her lady may the bishop as well as aaron know the full truth and then <laughs> but this part had me rolling when she talked about charity she's like why oh really charity's talking about something she want to preach charity shouldn't preach Hmm. Charity shouldn't even drive. I was rolling. I'm like, yeah, because her driving got her in trouble last season. So I was like, that was some good shade, Grace. That was some really good shade. All right. So then we see that um, Jacob reveals to Carissa that he talked to Doris Jackson and that her son actually, um, he's, um, I think he's in, I think he's a baseball player. And she's saying that he's been hired to become his life coach because he's been getting in a lot of trouble. So then we um, get a scene with um, Bishop and Lady May. Lady May is like stripping down to like her burlesque, you know, um, you know, you know, sexy pieces and everything. And we see the bishop is kind of like, hmm. Come to find out, they live in a separate quarters. Even though she took him back, they're not fully together. I mean, they're still divorced, but they're just living in the same house in different quarters. And and she even said that, look, you know, I brought you back, James, because I love you. I always will love you. But as far as being in love, he's like, and he's like, you know, and he's like, well, what do I got to do to get you back? She was saying that, look, one thing you need to understand, James, you are not catering to a woman you know, you're not catering to a woman who is a damsel in distress anymore. You're catering to a woman who has had everything. So what you need to do is sweep me off my feet. And he was like, 
how I'm going to do that? And she says, you're going to have to do that in ways I can't imagine. And he's like, good to know. So I was like, the bishop going to get her back. He's going to get her back. So we just got to see how that's going to play out. Um, then we see that Grace gets a call from the correction facility of some guy named AJ. And she's debating whether she's going to take the call. The question is, who is AJ? And why is he in jail? And why is he calling Grace? What's really going on? So then we see that Zora goes to Lady May. She asks, can she get Noah's old cabin? She pretty much says that, yeah, if you come to Bible study every morning. But she's like, Grandma, but it's 5 in the morning. She's like, well, honey, I'm trying to set you on the right path. Because when we get this church back, you know, it may go to your Auntie Grace. And then one day it may go to you. And she's like, I don't see myself being called to the pulpit. And she's like, well, hey, you know, that's why you're going to begin this journey to see that there may be a possible role you can play. But then Zora's like, okay, can you make it 530? And she's like, sure. So she gives her the keys. And now Zora got her own little spot. And I already know Zora going to get into some mischief knowing her. Um, then we see that uh, Grace has a meeting with um, Dwight. Um, well, they run into each other, and he's pretty much kind of like being like a supervisor, like they're saying that, you know, Grace, like, um, you know, um, Bob wants to know, have you moved to your new office and all that. She says, you know, I'll do it when I'm ready. And she walked off, and he kind of felt some kind of way, but I'm like, they literally are treating this like Grace is an employee. Like, Grace, Grace grew up in Greenleaf, you know, that was like... Her, I mean, she grew up in Calvary. I'm sorry. I need to say her last name. I mean, she grew up in Calvary. And now being treated like an employee in the church that she was bred in. Like, this is... They are really doing the most. And Grace just completely blew Dwight off. Um, and then we see that Grace checks her phone and she gets a message from Noah that he really needs to talk to her. Then we get a scene where... You know, with um, Dwight and Charity. So now Dwight has worked his little aim on Charity because, you know, due to the fact that Grace ain't under his control or some way that he can manipulate, he went to Charity. And Charity is just... Charity got a whole bunch of inner resistance towards Grace, probably from back when they were kids, you know. You know, and she's pretty much saying that, like, shoot, I should be able to preach, shoot, I lost my husband to the gays, and I lost my career, and I did this, and, like, I should be called to preach. And she does have a point. She's been through some stuff, so, therefore, it does give her a fire to get in the pulpit. The question is, can she do it? And, but the thing is, we never know that because they've always put her down and told her no. We ain't worried about Charity being in the pulpit. That ain't for her. But... Who knows? Charity may blow everybody away. I mean, she's been wanting to preach for years, but they have always told her no. So now you got um, Dwight literally, you know, playing a violin to her ear, you know, kind of like playing on to, you know, like, I got you. You know, if you scratch my back, I scratch yours. This type of thing. And then she starts saying some real messy things towards Grace. Talking about some, Grace hates me. And, you know, I'm the good one. I'm better than her. And all of that. And I'm like, really, honey? You better than Grace. When yet, last season, when she was telling your simple behind to come home, you know, when you decided to run to Atlanta because you was mad that you went after that um, Jabari and Jabari turned you down after you went and come back to the tour. And then you decided to go across state lines with little Nathan, even though you knew what is against the law and Grace told you to come back and you chose to stay and then they end up arresting you and bringing you back home. Really, you better than Grace. You the good one. Charity, if you don't sit your stuck up self down, swear that girl be doing too much. And she really did the most later on and I'm about to get to it. So we already see that Dwight is already starting to spin his web and he's going to use Charity as a part of his plan. So then we see Grace goes to tell Bob and she tells Bob straight up, you know, bring my brother and my sister on or I'm walking away. You know, 
Um, and and she, but he was like, "Well, what if we were to let you go?" And she says, "You won't." And he was like, "Are you over exaggerating your importance?" I was like, "Oh, he is just so evil." Like, dude, like Grace is like the chosen one. Like she's the one that the she's the one that the deacons wanted. You know, as far as being a part of the church, and probably if she would have taken it early on. They probably, she probably, um, I think Connie wouldn't have, wouldn't have went to Harmony and Hope. She went to Harmony and Hope because Grace kept rejecting, you know, and she wouldn't break away from her family. But Grace is loyal to her family, and he, and Bob was saying that being loyal to family, putting family first is a mistake. You know, you have what it takes to be a religious leader. I've been following you all the way to Phoenix, and I was like, Phoenix! Didn't we hear about Phoenix last season? Um, where, um, you know, member Rochelle the Jezebel kind of told um, Grace, I know what you did in Phoenix. And we was like, what did you do in Phoenix, Grace? Oh, we find out a little bit about Phoenix. Or maybe possible, well, something went down in Phoenix. And we we about to find out about this, child. But, um, but yeah. But he, I think, Bob even knows all her tea. Because Bob knew all the information about um the um the the minister that he took over his church the one that um that bishop greenleaf had told him about mike evans there we go so if he knew about mike evans t i'm pretty sure he knows everything about grace and what really happened in phoenix so he's playing devil's advocate right now and she pretty much says that look either you bring on my brother and sister or i'm done and it's not negotiable so then we see that Jacob meets up with Perry who's a sports manager about Dante and of course they bring up you know Jacob's past you know about him you know being involved in all that stuff with Triumph and everything and he pretty much says that I was innocent he's like what well, I was innocent about that he's like yeah but currently you're not in no church right now you're not working at any church but then she, he had told him that, look, I'm hoping that I become associate pastor at Calvary, you know, under um, Harmony and Hope. So I'm just waiting to hear back. But, you know, uh, but uh, Dante's mother was saying that, look, Jacob is the right person for my son. He's a good, he's a good man. And he's perfect to help him get, get my son back, you know, on the straight and narrow. So then we see that Carissa, you know, um, she runs into Maris. Well, Marisol brings her laundry, and she pretty much says that, "Oh, um, I need a, I have a message for you, Carissa. Lady May wants you wants you to know that we do laundry in this house on Tuesday and Fridays, and can you make sure you have your laundry together on those days?" But then Carissa was like, "Well, I can do it myself," and she was like, "She doesn't want anybody other than staff touching the machines." Um, and then all of a sudden we see Jacob come in and he was like, oh yes, you know, he's like, I hope I get this job. And he, she was like, yes, I hope you do get this job so we can get out of this house. But she's thinking he's talking about the job with the sports person. He was like, oh no, I'm talking about the job, you know, jo the job at, um, at Calvary. I hope, um, I hope, uh, you know, Grace, you know, gets me in as her AP. And he was like, eh, um, and pretty much, uh, she was like, <laughs> he's like, isn't that great? And she was like, you're depending on your mother and Gigi to get you a job. That is not my idea of good news. I'm like, Carissa is doing the most. And he was just, just as, just as, just as spent. Like, you just like, she, you just can't win for nothing with her right now. And she's taking it out on everybody because she's just getting tired of being played. Which I understand. Oh yeah. So then we um we see that um Zora and Sophia are talking. You know, Zora got a thing for Dante, who's the guy that Jacob is gonna be mentoring. And you know, so Sophia's like, girl, do you ever get attracted to something that doesn't look like trouble? Um and then, and then, like she was um, telling, um, and then she was like telling, uh, you know, uh, 
Sophia, that won't you move in with me? Like, I got this whole place to myself. We can live it up. And she's like, uh-uh. I'm going to college. And she says that Roberto had came by to say goodbye. And, you know, Sophia's on her way to school. I'm just wondering which school she's going to. Um, because, you know, she was going to go to that school, you know, you know, I think Rose, um, Rose University, you know, with, um, with Roberto, but I think she chose to go somewhere else. So then we get the whole family discussion and let me say that that charity showed her natural behind in this scene. And I was like, oh, charity is really going to create a whole bunch of mess this season and i already see it from here because what happened is that you know grace comes in and they ask what so what happened you know as a meeting with bob bob decided to take on jacob as his ap and pretty much told pretty much said that you know charity he's not gonna he's not bringing charity on and and if anything, Charity's mad because she feels betrayed by Grace because she said that you were supposed to say, take both my brother and my sister or I walk. So you should have walked, but yet you stayed because you and Jacob got put on and I got left out and I got forgotten about. And she just went off. And then Carissa was like, come on, Charity, you're doing too much. And she's like, oh, how quickly we changed now that we got what we wanted. And then she told, and then she pretty much told her, like, I will beat your A-string, Bean. I was like, no, you're not, Charity. Seriously? You really getting buckled? <laughs> like, I mean, we know you could probably beat Carissa's behind, but seriously? And she just starts going off like, no. Like, y'all don't care about me. That's what this is. Yeah. She wants y'all wanna be the only ones preaching and y'all always forget about me. Y'all don't care about me. And she just goes off and just pretty much was like, you know, oh yeah, y'all gonna regret this because I'm gonna be a pastor. Yeah, Pastor Charity Greenleaf. Mm-hmm. And call herself giving her a little sermon and walked away. Went on the phone and called Dwight and told Dwight I'm in because Dwight um, said that can she be his eyes and ears to what's going on in the church. So she going to end up being a little busybody for him thinking it's going to make her come up. But Dwight obviously is about Dwight and Dwight's just going to use her till he can't use her no more and then he'll throw her away. I mean, I kind of see that's where the story is going to gonna head to. But if I'm wrong, oh well. But that's where I'm seeing it right now. Charity then literally made her deal with the devil. And then we see that Grace gets a phone call. And she gets a phone call from Noah. So Noah is now back in the picture. And then she says that I got a call from some inmate in Arizona. He says, he tells me that he's our son. I'm like, whoa! Are you serious? So that's what she did in Phoenix. She got a son that's locked up. Probably a son she gave up for adoption. So she was probably pregnant by the time she left 20 years ago. So her son would be like in his 20s or so right now. And he's pretty much locked up in the system. So I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting. So we going we probably we now come to find out that Sophia got an older brother. Wow, this is crazy. I'm like, yo, shout out to the to the creators and the cast for a, you know that does this show. You guys are so amazing because this storyline had me gagged. I was like, what? So Grace had a whole kid, and we just now finding out about it in season four. So it seems that Grace got some of her skeletons to deal with this season. And I'm waiting to see how this is going to play out. So she got a son with Noah. This is crazy. And I can't wait to see who this boy is. But his name is AJ. So this is Grace's son. And this, and like, wow, child. Like, this is a lot. Ooh, I can't wait to see, like, why does she give him up and all that? I want to know the whole story. 
nuts, and I'm so here for it. But um, that's what I got, y'all. If I miss anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. But um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I will be back with the next episode of Greenleaf. I'm so happy this show is back, y'all. Season 4 is going to be crazy. And I am so here in my front seat, ra rating, waiting to see what happens next. So until next time, everybody, take care.